Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about second cranial nerve, that is optic nerve. Before examining the optic nerve or second cranial nerve, uh, you start looking at the patient's face and eyes. Normally when you look at the eyes, first thing you are, we may be observing is the pupil of the eyes. When you look at the pupil, first look at the size of the pupil. When in infancy, uh, it may be small and in adolescence it becomes the size increases and again in, when the pe pe person become old the size is smaller next look at the shape of the pupil normally it is round but there are some conditions the size may size and shape may be altered then look at the symmetry both eyes should be equal the pupil of both eyes should be equal if they are not equal you can tell it is anisocoria so size, shape and uh, uh, symmetry is very very important. Now we will see what is meiosis and midriasis. Meiosis is small people comparing to the opposite side or you can co uh, compare with the normal uh, uh, people gauge. You can see the size of the people. If it is small you can call it as meiosis. If it is large you can call it as midriasis. I am discussing very common things which can produce meiosis and midriasis. There are a lot of causes for this. Causes for meiosis is Horner syndrome. The most common, most important cause is Horner syndrome, pontine hemorrhage, lateral medullary syndrome, uh, cluster headache, migraine, uh, or if the patient is on morphine or codeine, he has taken morphine or codeine, he can have uh, small people. Pupillary dilatation is seen when there is a third cranial nerve palsy, autonomic seizures or dysfunction, brain death, cerebral edema, raised ICP, atropine, patient is on atropine, all these things can produce dilated people or midriasis. When one eye is dilated and another eye is uh, constricted, you can call it as anisocoria. So, different type, type si size of people seen in different eyes is called as anisocoria. So, physiologically you can see anisocoria in 20% of the normal person. So, there is a slight difference, uh, less than 1 millimeter is uh, seen in uh, some uh, normal individuals, this is a physiological anisocoria. But classically anisocoria is described in two important conditions. One is third nerve palsy where you get dilated people, Horner syndrome you get uh, constricted people. Suppose right side ocular motor nerve palsy is there, right side people will be dilated, opposite side will be normal or small. So anisocoria causes are Horner syndrome. Mechanical anisocoria seen in uh, problems inside the eye. ADS tonic people can be seen in some patients. And some pharmacological agents like uh, you put uh, drops to dilate the people in ophthalmology examination. You can see that eye people will be dilated. So anisocoria co common cause are third nerve palsy and Horner syndrome. Sometimes you can see anisocoria in head injury also. Now we will see how to examine the eye. The first step is checking the visual acuity. You can use the Snellen's chart for that. The chart should be placed 6 meters away from the patient. Patient will be trying to read the chart. In the chart there are different lines, different letters you can see. If a patient reads the, all the 6 lines, uh, that is 6 by 6, from a 6 meter distance, you can record it as 6 by 6. If the patient is not able to read lines in between, you can write the uh, thing according to this. So, six, letter, six lines, if the patient is able to read from the six uh, meter distance, you can record it as six by six. This, is, this chart is called as Snellen chart. This is for testing visual acuity of the patient. Suppose if the patient tells is not able to see anything like emergency room you can see acute loss of vision you can either ask the patient whether he is seeing any red light when you flash the torch light on the face of the patient if it is uh, if he is able to see that then you can ask to count the fingers so so many ways in acute uh, conditions you can test the visual uh, visual acuity initially but in an ophthalmology clinic normally they ask to read the snellen's chart in emergency room, we may ask uh, to see whether the patient is able to see the light when the torch is flashed on the face, red light uh, reflex are seen or uh, you can ask to count the fingers if the vision is diminished. So Snellen chart is 
uh, reading Snellen chart is the test done for visual acuity in ophthalmology clinics. So this is a Snellen chart. You can see there are six lines. Even you can see color uh, bars in the chart. You can even test the color vision with the same chart. Now we'll go for pupillary reflex examination. You have two when when you put the light on uh, one uh, a per person's uh, eyes. You can see when the light is falling on the uh, right side. You can see immediately the pupil will be constricting, and you can see the opposite side also constricting. So that is called as uh, pupillary reflex. Direct pupillary reflex is when the light is shown to one eye, pupil constrict in that eye is the direct pupillary reflex. Consensual pupillary reflex or uh, 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 you see the same uh, constriction on the opposite side. When the light is shown to one eye, opposite eye also, eye pupil also will be constricting. This is called as indirect pupillary reflex or consensual pupillary reflex. In second cranial nerve, that is a nerve which carries the sensation to your brain. That is an afferent cranial nerve for this light reflex. If that is damaged, when you are putting the light, uh, the same side uh, direct reflex is lost and even the opposite side reflex is lo also lost. That is because when you are putting the light, the sensations or the electrical activity is not taken to your brain. That is why both sides you will lose the uh, pupillary reflex. Whereas in third uh, cranial nerve palsy, uh, that is oculomotor nerve, that is afferent for this pupillary reflex. When you are putting the light on uh, uh, one side, if third nerve palsy is on the same side, you will lose the direct reflex on the that side. But uh, if uh, opposite side, you can see the reflex because uh, second cranial nerve is intact that takes the sensation to the brain and produces the uh, pupillary reflex on the opposite side. Here we are discussing about second cranial nerve. So in an optic nerve lesion, that is a afferent for this pupillary reflex, ipsilateral side that is the side of the lesion you get direct reflex will be absent and you can see the opposite side also eyes will not the people will not be constricting so that is called as uh, direct and consensual reflex will be absent in optic cranial nerve lesion pupillary reflex we have tested so in second cranial nerve you put the light on the side you will not see any constriction opposite side also you will not be seeing any constriction but whereas in third cranial nerve, only same side you will not, you lose the reflex. That is because when you are putting the uh, light on the third nerve uh, area, opposite side may move normally, but the same side will not uh, constrict because third nerve is involved in the uh, uh, reflex arc. Now, direct pupillary reflex we have already discussed. Put the light on patient's face. You can see that side is constricting. So, to examine this uh, test, you ask the patient to sit, uh, examiner has to uh, make the patient sit in, in his front and keep uh, patient's one eye in the, uh, or keep uh, patient's uh, hand on the middle of the uh, face in between two eyes and put the light on one side. That means uh, you put the torch light on right side, you can see the right side, people will be constricting. And you can even see the opposite side also constricting. So, when you are getting both direct and indirect pupillary reflex positive, you can tell that that cranial nerve is normal. So, remember, ask the patient to sit in front of you and keep one hand in the middle of two eyes uh, so that the uh, uh, torch light will not fall on the opposite side. You can see when you are putting on the right side, you can see the pupil constrict on the uh, side and opposite side also, you can see the uh, constriction. This is direct and indirect pupillary reflex examination. So, in, uh, normally when you are putting the light, you can see uh, the same side and opposite side is constricting. When the light is falling on the face, uh, people will constrict. In optic cranial nerve lesion, uh, the same side uh, uh, pupillary re reflex will be lost and you can see the opposite side also will be lost. Whereas in third cranial nerve, only on the side of the lesion, you will uh, get an absent reflex. Next test is swinging light test. This is for uh, a, a lesion in the relative afferent pupillary defect. You ask the patient to sit in front of the examiner. 
and using a torch light in from right side to left side you can see when you are putting the light on one side you can see a paradoxical dilatation of the affected people when the light is falling on the uh, face instead of constriction of people so normally when you are putting the light you can see the constriction but here are seeing a paradoxical dilatation of the affected people this is called as marcus gun people uh, this is seen in optic neuritis in especially in multiple sclerosis so this test we are doing for relative afferent pupillary defect or rapd this uh, condition is called as marcus gun people when you are swinging the light on one side to other side you can see when you are putting the when the light is falling on the uh, eye it will be the pupil will be dilating this is called as marcus gun pupil now we'll check accommodation reflex in the eyes for doing this test the examiner will be sitting in front of the patient ask the patient to focus on a distant object like a clock on the wall or light or switch anything which is on the wall you can patient will be focusing place the examiner's finger approximately 15 cm in front of the patient suddenly and ask the patient to switch the looking uh, from the that distant object to the nearby finger so suddenly patient is asked to uh, switch his uh, vision from a distant object to near object normal person you can observe uh, the patient's uh, pupil uh, you can see the constriction and convergence of uh, uh, eyes bilaterally so sudden constriction of uh, pupil and eyes will be converging towards uh, the uh, uh, near object so patient will be looking at distant place suddenly asked to look at a near place you can see the eyes will converge and people will construct this is called as accommodation reflex now you can see the color vision either using a ishihara chart you can see this is ishihara chart uh, or you can bedside you can examine three major colors you can use blue red and green you can ask the patient to identify blue red and green cards or you can if you have a ishihara chart you can see um, you can ask the patient to count the numbers given in the chart if there is normal color vision he will tell it is 12 so that is ishihara chart next test is check the patient's field of vision okay to check the visual field the examiner will be sitting in front of the patient and the examiner uh, can either test both the eyes together or individual eyes se uh, separately so first we will check the uh, 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 visual field of both eyes together so you ask the patient to open his both eyes the examiner will be sitting in front of the patient and patient will be looking at examiner's eyes and slowly examiner will bring, uh, bring uh, keep the hand uh, in a distant place in uh, following positions you can you can keep in uh, two o'clock position uh, uh, three o'clock position and six o'clock position and uh, uh, four o'clock position so from all these directions examiner will be slowly moving the fingers towards the center so when the examiner is seeing the finger the patient also has to see if uh, you are checking from 3 o'clock position, you slowly move from 3 o'clock position towards the central. When the examiner sees the finger, patient also have to see the finger. That is a normal for the patient. That is provided that examiner's vision is normal, field of vision is normal. Then ask the patient to close one eye. Like examiner will be closing his left eye, patient will be closing his right eye and looking on the uh, patient has to look at the patient uh, examiner's eye. Slowly, examiner will move uh, the finger from 2 o'clock position towards center, 3 o'clock position towards center, and 4 o'clock and uh, 2 o'clock position towards center, again 6 o'clock position to center, and 9 o'clock position to center. All positions, examiner will be slowly moving his finger towards center. At one point, examiner can see the finger. At the same time, patient also have to see the finger. So, this is uh, to chart the visual field of the patient. So, repeat your movement from all directions. Whenever you are seeing the finger, patient also should uh, report that he is also seeing the finger. That is for visual field. Next test is for fundoscopy. You can see the fundus in a patient who is having, uh, who is coming for ophthalmology checkup. So, fundoscopy is normally done to uh, 
understand what is the status of the vessels in the fundus and you can see the cup also. So normally in diabetic patients, hypertensive patients, you can directly visualize the arteries in your fundus. So when you have a diabetic uh, retinopathy, the same type of changes you can see in the kidney also. When you have a uh, hypertensive retinopathy, you can see the same type of changes in kidney also. So patient can have proteinuria, all these things. On top of that, you can see some other changes like bleeding in the eyes, cotton wool appearance, so many different uh, infections you can see. So many things also you can observe by examining the fundoscopy. So uh, ask the patient to sit in front of, a, uh, front of the examiner. A fundoscopy should be done in a darkened room. Pupil can be dilated with short acting midriatic eye drops. But normal clinical settings, uh, it may not be possible. So you'll have to do direct uh, fundoscopy. Uh, in a control setting, you can put the uh, drops which is used for dilating the uh, fundus. So whenever you are putting the drops, please document it that because uh, uh, some patients who come with head injury or raised ICP, when you are putting the uh, drops in one eye, that will be mistaken as a anisocoria by a different doctor. So please document that when you are putting a uh, eye drops. Then uh, ask the patient to look at a uh, distant object. When the examiner is start, uh, start, uh, starting this uh, test, the pa patient will be looking at a distant uh, object. Slowly, the examiner will be seeing the fundus through the fundoscope. First, look at an artery in the fundus. So, get a vessel in the fundus and track this vessel towards central. You can see the cup of the uh, 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 retina. You can slowly uh, go your uh, 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 fundoscopy towards center you can see the optic disc and assess the optic disc for its color margins and cupping and assess the retinal vessels and see what is the condition of retinal vessel like whether av nipping is there neovascularization is there cotton wool spots are there all these th things can be observed by a fundoscopy then ask the patient to look at the uh, look at the uh, uh, fundoscope then you can see the uh, uh, macular degeneration or uh, you can see the macula. So macula can, can be observed for macular degeneration. So whenever you are examining a fundoscopy, uh, if you are putting the drops in eyes, document that patient will be looking in a distant place, look at the vessel, trace the vessel towards the optic disc. Once you see the optic disc, see the color, margin and cupping. Then ask the patient to look at the light, you can see the uh, macula, you can document the changes in the uh, disc, vessels and macula. So we have examined the second cranial nerve. So always uh, look at the patient's eye, uh, whether any drooping of eyelid is there, whether eye, any eye deviations are there. Then look for the pupils, asymmetry in the pupil is very very important. Then put a torch and see what is the reaction which is occurring both eyes. Swing the light in between two eyes, you can see the changes in that. Then examine for the visual acuity and visual field. Color vision can be checked. Uh, so uh, we, can, we can do a complete second cranial nerve examination. Thank you.